Gwen Stefani just said she's Japanese. Now, a lot of people are coming out against her, calling it classic cultural appropriation. A lot of people are coming out to defend her, saying that she should be able to identify however she wants. And this just turned into a hot political debate. I would have never guessed that Gwen Stefani in 2023 would be able to get 7 million internet comments, some supporting her, some going against her, some in the middle. Let's break it down. We've got five major takeaways representing the five major viewpoints. Of course, we're going to give our hot takes at the end. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. Number one, let's just get into the right wing response because the right wing, they had a field day with this one. They said, hey, classic overwokiness. A white person in America can't even show appreciation anymore without being called racist. She liked the Harajuku culture and then people are trying to call her racist for it. This whole country's stupid. I mean, if a man can identify as a woman, why can't a white woman identify as Japanese? She's an artist anyways. Clearly, she appreciates the culture. Yeah, I mean, I do think there is something to be said for people being overly sensitive, but I do think, obviously, they're not taking into consideration any sort of history from Gwen Stefani, any sort of other comments that she would have made. And obviously, she probably... Also a Republican now, now that she's married to Blake Sheldon, so they're more defending their yeah, own tribe. You, you know what I would like this conversation to go is, what are we fluid about when it comes to identity? Are we fluid about gender? That's fine, cool. Are we also fluid about culture and ethnicity? Not as cool right now. So I guess I want to have more conversations about that. Yeah, because I, I, I would say the gender and ethnicity are different. Yeah, they're different. Yeah. I get it. They're totally different. That's why we need to have these conversations because are you applying that logic to this yeah. or not? But we need to have, we need to specify. I'm not going to give the right wing zero out of 10 points on this, but definitely I don't fully agree. I think they have an unbalanced perspective. Of course, number two, Andrew, speaking of unbalanced perspectives, probably also the left, right? The left said, basically, you white people are the dominant baseline culture ever since Anglos conquered the world 200 to 400 years ago. And they just feel like they can go around saying that they're Asian, that they're Chicana, that they're Indian, which is all things that Gwen Stefani has been accused of, even though she's Italian American, not Anglo, but like basically white women can just take all the parts they want, fetishize it, and then throw away all the realities. Because where was Gwen Stefani when all the Asian women were getting attacked over the past couple years? She said nothing. Clearly that, if she identifies is as so Asian, she actually only likes two streets in Harajuku. This is fair. This is fair. Listen, if someone's going to say they're Japanese, do they have to feel the pains of being an Asian person, right? Oh, whatever pains there might be. I, I'll tell you this. If she said, if Gwen Stefani said, I'm black, that would have been taken a lot differently. I don't know if Candace Owens would be defending her in the same way. You know yeah. what I mean? So I do think that it, although being black and being Japanese are viewed completely differently in American society, it's it's obviously like, where do we draw the line? And by right? the way, I think that the left also made some valid points. However, not fully. Also, it was I, also an unbalanced yeah, perspective, to be fair. Sure. Typically, when you're this end of the spectrum and you're yeah. that end of the spectrum, you just going for all the points that support your tribe and your side and not the whole thing. Moving on to number three, Andrew, we got to talk about the pop cultural mavens. This actually represents a larger section of the internet than you would think. These mm. are people who aren't hyper-political. I'd say they probably lean more left, but they're really more about just pop culture details mm, and the art behind it right and they were basically going into Gwen Stefani's past like she did the Chicana thing she did the Indian thing where she was rocking a bindi she likes to play with culture because she points to her grow, uh, upbringing in Orange County being like oh I grew up with so many cultures around me and some people were like I don't know we have to look at this within the context of Gwen Stefani's career of kind of being a culture vulture okay you know what I'll, I'll say this and I, I'm not gonna go ahead and call her a culture vulture because I did she did quote and say that she was appreciating all those different cultures. The she influences had a band, that she grew up with, right? She had a band member who was Indian, so she wanted to wear the bindi, whether that's the right way to show it. She's an artist, right? Um, but I would say, Gwen, if you say you're Japanese, do you speak any Japanese? Have you ever dated a Japanese person? What, have, what if you she have, was like, kind of pulling the Ariana Grande where she, they kind of meant, I want to be Japanese, but only if I'm pretty much the top Japanese well, person in the world. And if also, I'm the last samurai, then that's how I'm Japanese. And also, if she means that she more cares about Harajuku style, just say Harajuku instead of Japanese yeah. because Harajuku is its own style. It's its own glam rock. Like punk. less than 1% of Japanese people yeah. fit into the Harajuku anyway. archetype. Anyways, what's the next perspective, David? It comes from otakus. Like these are people who are actually into Japanese culture, especially pop culture. Yeah, they basically said in Japan that people would not really care that Gwen had the Harajuku girls because they don't even really like listen to Gwen's music that much. Maybe the international school kids did. And if anything, at that time in 04, they probably were appreciative. They probably were like, hmm, the way she's doing it is a little weird. But in Japan, we like weird. And some people were saying, pointing out though, that the Harajuku girls that sometimes had to bow to Gwen, like Gwen was the emperor or like some sort of like CEO. So some people were like, 
You know, it just kind of fits into the senpai kohai dynamic. And I guess if we isolate it, she was the queen pop star in 04 and they were underneath her like tutelage. So I guess they could see why she was the senpai. All right, guys, I, I do think that it leads to our next perspective, which is more the moderate perspective, which is someone who's like, I get the outrage, but I can't feel the same because basically it's saying, hey, listen, I wish that Gwen Stefani would just come out and say, she's an artist, she loves cultures, she's eccentric of a person, and she's kind of a weirdo, so she's just gonna play around with culture. All those Harajuku girls, they were in character, they got paid, they lived a fun life. So what's really wrong with it? It was probably her word choice. Yeah, I think that the moderate answer, once you take all arguments into like their totality, is basically like in 04, Gwen was definitely a good pop artist or a great pop artist because she pushed boundaries. Yeah. Sort of like Madonna, yeah, right? Yeah, you should. She it's was trying to be the new school Madonna, right? Yeah. So she was pushing the boundary in 04. The goalposts in society changed. Whether you like that or not, especially right-wing pundits, I'm sure left-wing pundits like it more because the goalposts have shifted in their favor. The goalposts have changed. You cannot do what Gwen did in 04 with Chicano, Indian, and Harajuku culture in 2023. Mm -hmm. Now, how you feel about that is up to you, but to pretend like it's the old days, like 1990 standards, or it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, basically, what she did back then was acceptable. It's kind of weird to cancel people post-retroactively right, looking right, at their right. history. It is. But obviously, if somebody debuted nowadays a pop artist using all those influences, it would be way more called into well, question. Well, even the past 10 years, we've had a lot of conversations about Katy Perry, Kim Kardashian with the kimono, uh, all this geisha type. I mean, it, this is a thing that comes up again and again. But Gwen, because she has this long history of being into Japanese culture and appreciating it in her own way, she's doubling down on it in 2023, which people just thought was a little bit And they weird. don't like it because she's married to Blake Sheldon nowadays, so it's actually a well, micro-mid-macro situation. <laughs> My overall takeaway is this. I liked it when she did the Harajuku Girls in 04. We thought it was kind of interesting. B A N A N A. Yes, I thought it was cool because at that time I was always into Japanese sneaker culture. I was in Harajuku, Shinjuku stuff. I was following Nigo and all this mm -hmm. stuff way back in the day, but a lot of people really weren't, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, man, she's like bringing it to the forefront. Now, when she brings it to the forefront, it is can be a hit or miss. I think she had elements that were dope, but them bowing to her, I could see why that was definitely cringy. Like, I can overall like the Harajuku movement for 04 standards, but acknowledge that there was swings and there was misses and there were swings and there was hits. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. Listen, she is an artist. She pushes boundaries. And I think in art, you do have a little bit more flexibility. However, she definitely did not update her firmware for 2023. Why, no, by doubling down and saying she's into Japan, she could have been more nuanced and just said, hey, I'm really into Harajuku. Because... I don't know about her matcha brand. Does she have like a traditional matcha brand? Right. Is she out there doing the tea? Is she like, into Shinto? Yeah, is she into Shinto Buddhism? What it like? She's not really like Japanese. She's not Japanese. That's just a fact, right? So she's she, she's into the sides and small aspects of Japan that are very popular that, globally that she likes. Listen, that's like me saying I grew up listening to rap. I dated a black girl, so hey, I'm black, or something. Like, it's literally, people would be like, nah, that's not exactly how it works. But, you know, I guess what I'm saying is just like, um, basically, she, she, she could have updated her firmware for this interview, um, and it might have saved her some trouble. If you want me to really get into my last final macro takeaway, Andrew, how much is sort of like this Anglo view on the Eastern world gonna be the default American view? Because that's what Megyn Kelly and all the right-wing pundits are trying to maintain. They're yeah. like, Listen, guys, as long as the Anglos are like well, whoever's Anglo adjacent, we just show like love. Who cares if like the love was a little misplaced or was a little bit misaligned or it wasn't fully 100 out of 100 on the mark? At least we said something positive about you. We used to want to kill you guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Obviously referencing World War II and stuff. I'm being dead serious. That's how they think. They're like compared to where we came from, even a misplaced or cringy love for you guys it's still just just take it, just accept it, right? Yeah. And obviously us being like actual minorities or people like, you know, for example, the writer of the article, I know I didn't want to make it sound like I was overly criticizing the Allure Filipino writer. Like I, I don't fully support her or go against her at all. I think she just made a solid point that I don't fully agree with. But it's like, I guess, isn't it fair that other minorities, we don't accept that same fondue point? Listen, it's fair to question Gwen Stefani even in, 
2023, you can ask her those questions and be like, hey, what do you think about these accusations? I thought it was weird. What do you think? And if she doubles down, then she has to live with how people are going to perceive it because she's not keeping her ears to the ground. She doesn't really understand how people would react to that. And even if in her heart she feels Japanese, she should also know, I guess, how that might be taken. But it is also true that Japanese is not a group despite the whole bombing of Japan and then also the internment of Japan and then the whole war against Japan. Um, they're not really considered like a, a oppressed group in America. Right. That's not how Pe we see people it. People do not take That's not how we see Japanese it. seriously, or I would say Asians in general, but the particular, the cartoony anime, ha Hatsune yeah. Miko yeah. aspects of Vocaloid aspects of Japan very seriously, because I will end on this. Ariana Grande used to love speaking Japanese to her crowd, but then she got a tattoo that was wrong, like the hiragana was wrong on mm -hmm. it, and it, she wrote like hibachi grill on her arm. Everybody made fun of her, and immediately after that, she stopped learning Japanese forever. So clearly, I'm not saying that she was fully wrong for ever learning in the first place, but clearly, the respect for the culture seemed to be on thin ice. I do think that if you want to use a culture and you think it's interesting, I think that's fine, but you still have to do your research. Yeah. Like, if you are going to get more popular by using elements of a culture, I think that's totally cool in America. Like, it's generally fine, because I think that if you have a true appreciation, why not? Because America's a mixed society. Of course, but uh, do your research. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, have some more conversations about it. All right, you guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I see a lot of, you know, discussions, arguing about the micro, but at the end of the day, hopefully we brought it to a macro level. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.